All right, so let's take a closer look at the Ender 5 S1. So you guys can see it's not that large. Actually, the footprint on the bottom is similar to an Ender 3 S1 or S1 Pro. It is a little bit taller, obviously, because of all that, and maybe a little wider because of the spool holder, but it's not that deep as you guys can see. So, so there's quite a few things to look at, but let's start here on the top with our most interesting and impressive piece here, which is the hot end direct drive extruder assembly. So it's quite an interesting looking design here. We have a metal plate with Creality logo. Beautifully constructed. Very interesting to look at. So on the top, this is where our cable comes in. We do have strain relief. It is a plastic strain relief, so it's bendable. The extruder mechanism is towards the front. There's a motor here for that. It is all plastic, but it seems to be pretty durable. Going down from there, we can see our heat brake, and there's a little bit of a gap between the heat brake and the extruder. So that's quite interesting as it's not combined like on the S1 and S1 Pro. And I think separating might help with heat creep going up into the extruder but you guys can see this is pretty tall here where the filament goes in and where it comes out so the whole frame is metal with different parts attached to it we do have a junction board back there and on the very back we have for the parts cooling with this quite unique looking 3d printed fan duct so it's one blower that splits in two and then blows here underneath the nozzle and the CR touch there is nestled right behind it or in front of it I guess on the inside and this is our heat block it is insulated and then our 0.4 nozzle tip yeah overall very unique and interesting how it's all assembled and you guys can see we got a pretty large heat break fan right there in the front and our cable comes out and goes all the way down into the base down there. So the way this printer works is like a normal X and Y printer so Y is like this front to back and then X is the hot end. This is not a core XY machine and so we got our Y motor here turns a belt on each side which connects to these ends here and it all moves together and our X motor is on the Y assembly and the belt goes through here and moves this so and so our home position would be in stop switch there for the Y and X here and the bed actually goes all the way down as the in stop switch is on the bottom so yeah, overall you guys can see everything is built really nice and it's nice how it all comes assembled. So looking at the Z axis, we've got two rods, looks like about 12 millimeters maybe. It might be larger than that. And then we have a pretty typical lead screw with an anti-backlash mechanism there with the spring. And that makes it where the bed just doesn't fall down on its own. So even though the bed mounts only there on those two rods, it's actually still very firm. You guys can see I'm pushing it here on the front and it's barely flexing. And I think these supports here have a lot to do with that as it's quite a bit more sturdy than you would think for this kind of setup and speaking about the bed we do have a 220 by 220 by 280 tall print volume which is quite good and this is our magnetic mat the two little bolts there that help us line up the PC steel sheet that's flexible so these work really well I'm glad it's on this printer some do say they stick too well but normally for me in the past these worked excellent so we got the steel sheet the aluminum heated part and you guys can see we are insulated on the bottom which is nice to see even though not really necessary for this size bed but it will heat up really quick so it's nice that they included that so as far as the frame of the bed it's made out of channels you guys can see it and maybe this is another reason why it's so sturdy. But yeah, with the supports there and the channels, it's quite incredible how sturdy this thing is. And we have large adjustable knobs to level each side. So our lead screw goes down to the coupler and the motor back there. You guys can see this is where it plugs in and also the Z axis switch is back there. We do get these nice braces on each side, make it all even more rigid. And looking on the right side of the printer, we have this pull holder, which will hold filament and then it can come out right here into the detector, and then out into the tube to the hot end. So not too much going on on the base, quite clean. We do have a manufacturing sticker, gives us some basic information. And on the very front, we have a reasonably large touchscreen display. So it looks a little plain here. Normally you'd have some kind of writing or something, but it's just clean and nothing there. And going down here, you guys can see on all the corners, we have protection here, bottom and the top. And going this way on the right side, we have full size SD card slot and also a USB type C connection there. And to the left, we got the power input port. It is fused with a on and off button. And the whole printer is sitting on four rubber feet. They're pretty squishy and that should help with noise and vibration. So let's go ahead and flip this thing around to the back. And I do like these handles and they're on both sides where you can pick up the printer and move it around. That's really convenient. And this is what it looks like from the back side. You guys can see the cable management here. 
Very nice. Our bed cable is strain relief going down to the base and it is removable and we can see where all the cables go inside. But the more important thing back here that we need to absolutely check is our voltage. So depending on where you live, you're going to set that to 230 or 115. So in the US, we need 115. So I need to switch that over. But if you live like in Europe, most likely you're at 230. So make sure you check that before you power the printer on. These are our caps here that clamp together around the bearings. And this is actually our, the pin that pushes on the end stop switch. And it looks like maybe it could be adjusted if needed. But yeah, overall very nice and well built printer. And aesthetically very pleasing here sitting on the desk. So for the next part, let's plug it in, power it on. We'll preheat it, home it, and level the bed. All right, so I got the printer plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, so it does power up. I heard the CR touch there. And it looks like we got the Creality logo coming up on the screen. All right, very cool. So it does look like we have a new style menu, which is quite interesting. And we'll look at it a little closer here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Prepare. And we'll click on Home here in the middle under the axes move. Okay, so we got the X moving. And then the Y going back. That's working. And I guess the Z moves separately, so there's a separate home here for the Z. Let's try that. And there it goes. So it moves down pretty quick, which is a good thing because that would be not cool if it moved slow like some do. All right. So now I'm going to click on temperature settings and we're going to preheat PLA. There's a hot button and that's going to go 205 on the nozzle and 60 on the bed. So I'm going to grab my little leveling tip paper and we're going to use this to level the bill plate. So let's go back to axes move. All right, so we need to go to settings. So we're going to click on a leveling method. And so we have a couple choices here. We got AUX leveling and outer leveling. So the first thing we want to do is AUX leveling because we do have knobs here. We need to get the bed as flat as possible. And then we'll use the auto leveling, which is going to be the CR touch. That's going to measure the bed and then compensate as it prints. So here we have a home button. Let's go ahead and click that. And that's going to set us up for the leveling. I really love how quick the Z-axis moves. That's a great feature. All right. And so now we can go to the four corners and also the middle. So we'll start with number two, which is this corner here. We'll get our paper and put it between the nozzle and the bed. So you do want to be preheated, which we are. And we're too loose, so I'm going to unscrew this side until we get a little drag. And there we go. Now we're going to go to this corner, which is number three. All right, when we get a drag, go to four, five, and then back to two. And you want to go around at least a couple times because as you change one corner, other corners kind of change too. So the closer you get it, the less offset the out of bed leveling will have to do. So let's go to the middle. And we're a bit loose or there's a bigger gap, but that's okay. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we have the outer bed leveling. We're gonna click on outer level right here and it's gonna ask us to start. And so I guess it wants to go all the way down because that's where the end stop switch is. All right, now the bed's going back up, but slower than normal, which is interesting. And I don't know if you guys can see, but our CR touch there is out and ready to probe. All right. So double probes. And it looks like there's going to be four across and four deep, which is 16 points. All right, and we are done with leveling. So let's go back home and let's go ahead and take a closer look at what's on the screen. 
All right, so we got hot buttons here on the side, home, print, prepare, and setting. So on home, this is what we see with the little Creality guy there. We got the nozzle temperature and the target, which is at zero because it's off. The bed temperature and the target, the speed, and the Z-axis offset, looks like. And then we got a stop and play button. If we click on print, this is where we're going to read our SD card, which we don't have inserted yet. Under prepare, we got three submenus, axis move, in and out, and temperature settings. So under axis move, we can home the X and Y and also the Z here separately. This is the core coordinates and then the amount if you want to move it manually by clicking the arrows. In and out is going to be our filament extruder controls and then temperature setting is going to be for the hot end, the bed and then PLA preheat and ABS. We also have cooling and fan controls. Under settings we've got device advanced settings and about. So under device we've got PLA preheating, ABS preheating, the leveling button and the language. And under language this is all the different ones that are available. Go back. Advanced settings, we got run out sensor, on or off, restore all, movement, and temperature PID. And about is information about our printer. So yeah, pretty straightforward and easy to use and the screen is very responsive and really a nice resolution. So let's click on prepare, temperature, and preheat PLA. And by the way, in settings, this is where you set the temperatures for that. So we can see we're preheating to those targets. Let's grab our SD card which is full size, 8 gig, very nice. And if you guys remember, it does plug here on the right side, upside down. Then we'll click on print. And sure enough, we have a couple files that are included. So I guess we'll start with the rabbit. And I'm guessing the boat is probably a benchy. So yeah, I might just print both of those out. And so before we can start our print, we need to put some filament in. And I'm going to use this blue filament that I have on a spool. We're going to cut it on an angle so it's easier to feed throughout the tubing and and it's gonna go here on the spool holder and let me just turn this to the side so you guys can see a little better putting the spool holder where the filament rolls out this way out into the filament detector here on the side and there's a little light that glows up when it goes through and I don't know if you guys can see but we're pushing the filament through the tube and probably the easiest thing to do is pull the tube out and then push the filament through and then grab it and put it in manually. So there's a lever here we have to pull on and then we can put the filament through there. Now I'm just gonna go all the way down, turn this back until it comes out the other end. And you guys can see it's purging out. So this is probably the easiest way to do it. And then you can just put the tube back in and you're ready to go. You can use the extruder controls in here, but because it's a direct drive, it's much easier just to push it through yourself. So let's click on this little rabbit and I guess we gotta push play here. And there it goes, it started. So it looks like the bed's going to have to come down and home. So let's pause there for a second. Homing again. Yeah, now look at that, how quick that Z-axis is moving up. So yeah, even though there's a little bit of waiting up and down, but it's not bad because it moves quite quick. And there it goes. And actually, guys, I just forgot that we did not adjust the Z-axis offset. So I totally forgot to do that after we did the out of bed leveling. And I could tell that it's way too high. So let's go ahead and stop this before it goes anywhere else. And so let's go back to settings leveling. And under AUX leveling, we have the offsets here that we forgot to go back and do. So let's go ahead and set it up for home. All right, now we can set our Z axis offset. And you guys can see we're way too high or too loose. So let's go ahead and bring it down. Okay, so pushing down is actually making the bed go down, so we need to go up. Okay, now it goes into minus. Okay, so if you hold it, it can actually go pretty quick. I'm getting close, not quite there. Oh, there we go. Starting to catch. Yeah, make it just a little looser maybe. Mine ended up being minus 0.85 millimeters offset. So yours could be different a bit, but yeah, we definitely needed to do that after we did the out of bed level. Or you could do it after the manual one, it doesn't really matter. But in any case, now that that's set, we can go back, back to print. Rabbit, we'll start it and we'll try again. All right, so that does look a little better there. I, think I need to get a little closer, but yeah, so I'm actually minus 1.50, so I'm not sure what happened, but I had to go quite a bit more there. And so it's printing really quick, even the first layer. It looks like this thing is sliced to print really fast. Let's go ahead and zoom in into the screen here and check out what kind of options we have as we're printing. So it looks like this 
half here changes to the printing and then this one still stays the way it is and you can't do anything on that side obviously as it's printing but here we can see it says the file that is printing then we have the percentage with the progress circle and how much time passed three minutes then we got the nozzle temperature and the target the bed temperature target the speed and the z-axis offset you guys can see we're set at minus 1.55 then we got a stop and a pause button so I'm guessing to adjust anything is we click on something here we got parameter settings menu and I'm guessing you can click on anything well okay you do have to click on one of these here so we get nozzle temperature adjustments heat bed adjustment print speed fan control run out sensors on power outage is on and happy to see this feature because I think once we do spiralized mode we would need to turn this off as if you guys know that most printers have problems if the power recovery is on so I'm really happy to see this and then we have the z-axis compensation up and down so yeah very cool and you pretty much have everything you need so I'm gonna let you guys hear what the printer sounds like So I definitely say that it's more on the quieter side than louder, but you know, not very quiet as we do have some of that sound from the motor coming, but it is running really quick right now. But as far as fan noise, it's quite moderately low. So it looks like everything is working great and it's printing really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and print this little rabbit out and we'll also print out the boat that was included and see what these prints turn out like. All right, so our little rabbit and looks like the Benchy have printed out and I was pretty impressed of how quick it was printing as it appears they're sliced to print quite quick because the rabbit finished in about 15 minutes or so and the Benchy only took one hour and 10 minutes looks like and you guys saw how the screen dims down after a while so that's a nice little feature so yeah very quick for both of these prints so let's go ahead and check mark that and it goes back to our main menu. All right, so let's see what we got here. We'll look at this little rabbit first. Yeah, for how quick it printed, it actually looks very, very good. So if I get a little closer, you guys can see how smooth the layers went down. Very impressive. We do have a little bit of ghosting or ringing, whatever that is. But And even under here, this part usually never turns out great, especially at fast speeds. But yeah, it did all right. And on the other side there, looks pretty good too. Yeah, the face here very nice and the ears also look great there's a little bit more layering there almost no stringing at all and our bottom also looks really good so yeah impressive let's check out this benchy and it's still stuck on the bill plate let's see how easy it comes off oh look at that no problem at all so with this bed type you have to be a little farther away than closer as it does stick very well and you guys saw that popped off really easy and that's what the bottom looks like very nice so the back there a little messy but we have high speed here and looking at our walls well, there's something a little weird there but other than that it actually looks really good surprisingly good actually for how quick that was there's usually a lot of ghosting around these parts here we almost have no ghosting which is quite incredible and our walls look great including the overhangs there in the back we can see a little bit more ringing there the box and the top so yeah overall very solid 